with beer. Hey, podcast kittens, it's Kathy Kata. Hey, my beer curry, I do with yet another nostril nibbling installment of Cat with, with beer. beer. We are back again with my dear friend Kyle Cat Card. The I Trump car in the house. I love the face you did at nostril nib- nibbling. Nostril <laughs> <laughs> nibbling? When was the last time you nibbled a nostril? Never. What? <laughs> pretty, pretty sure I never did that. You don't know what you're missing. Apparently, I yeah. I hear it's pretty fun. Okay, yeah. tell us nice. all about it on another episode. Not this one. This don't episode so is snotty. about Kyle Card. What are we talking about here today? If you want to talk about Turning nostrils, your nose up. Oh, <laughs> my God. Okay. Indeed. How are you, Kyle? Absolutely fabulous. Good, bros. All right, today we're going to talk a little bit more about your acting career in Japan because oh, there's much you. more stuff you have done than just what we kind of dabbled into. So we you've sort done, of talked about it, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, like so, bit, so many gigs. So you, you were on, on Tokyo MX, you were on NHK, mm-hmm. you did Sunshine Ikazaki's Jokes in English. What yep. else did we miss? Well, I filmed a magical show called The Benza with my oh. good mate Christopher McCombs. Yes. The Benza! The Benza, which means toilet seat, everyone. Yeah, yes. I was going to say that means toilet seat. Yes, and it's available for viewing all over the world on Amazon Prime and other <laughs> streaming services. Oh. That's right. There's a plug for you. I'm plugging. I'm plugging. The Benza, folks. Remember, The Benza. The Talk Benza. How many Benza. episodes? What is it about? Yep. Well, the Benza, it starts out when uh, two roommates, Chris and Kyle, they wake up one morning and there is a crack in their toilet seat. And they think, oh my goodness, why is there a crack in our toilet seat? First of all, what is a toilet seat called in Japanese? Because they live in Japan, by the way. They're two roommates in Japan. So they have a flashback to their Japanese class and they have a very erotic Japanese teacher called Inko-sensei. And then they learn that it's called a Benza. So they're like, where do we find a Benza? In this world, there's no Amazon Prime or anything mm-hmm. like that. You know, you can't go out and just order it on online. So in our world, we had to go out and find a toilet seat, and the adventure begins. Oh. It turns into an interdimensional war, and it's just, it's just, it's a fun old good time. There's currently two seasons on streaming platforms everywhere, and we'll be filming a third season. So stay tuned for that. I do not have a timeline, but it's coming. So Remarkable. is it in Japanese? It is in Japanese. Said. All of the actors are speaking in Japanese. We have um, people from all over the world. We, we have Americans. We we have Swedish, we have oh, Canadians, oh. and we have Japanese, of course. Do you have any course. Germans in there? Germans, wait. There's a Swede. Wait, there is a Swede. There is a Swede. There's a Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait. Germans, maybe no Germans. There might be Germans. <gasps> Gasp. Gasp. There's a Spanish Gasp. girl. We need some Germans Spanish, in there. we have Spanish. Yes, Spanish. We have all representation. That's right. Okay. Um, hot take here. Hot take. It's kind of rare to have that many foreigners on a Japanese drama very rare is it not very very rare so how did doesn't that come exist about? doesn't exist exactly well we essentially uh came together and uh made it exist um oh. through the uh wonderful mind of christopher combs mm. we uh first made the benza which was a short film and um we uh it was very um well received in a uh, film festival in korea mm. oh yeah, and then we kind of from that we got it was a web festival and we kind of got the idea to make it into a series. So we started filming more episodes. Okay, and then we started getting some accolades. It started getting viewed in different places all over the world, and I eventually won Best Actor oh! at a web fest festival in Korea. Yay! Congratulations, Yay! in Korea. Korea, in Korea. That's right. That's where they have the best web series awards. They have a couple of web series uh you know, events there every year. Wow. Yeah. We walk in the red carpet, and at one of these uh, events, I actually wore a toilet seat around my neck. You're going was, on brand. Yes, Sounds yes. very much walk on brand. In the, walk in the red carpet with a toilet seat around my neck, thanks to my good friend and mentor, Deborah, who gave me the, the good Aww. idea to wear a toilet seat. I'm like, she you're a crazy awesome. lady. It's like, just do it. I'm like, oh, okay, it sounds cool. I'll do it. And I went out and found a toilet seat in Korea. And I Instagrammed this at the time because the Benza is talking about finding a toilet seat in Japan. So I was finding a toilet seat in Korea. Uh. Life imitating art. And I actually went around. I didn't know what a toilet seat was called in Korea. I found oh. it was called a Pyongi. Pyongi! Like, Pyongi so, Pyongi so. I'm like, oh, up, say, oh, up, say, oh. I'm like, okay, uh, okay. And they pointed me around. I went through this whole shopping complex and I found a toilet seat. Then I found some lovely gold and silver markers. I wrote the bends on it. I put on my tuxedo, put it around my neck, and off to the red carpet I was. And I was quite photographed. I had it around the neck of the, the coordinator of the festival himself, all the other actors wow. from around the world, putting it on, taking photographs of the bends around the neck. It was great. Clever. Yes. Wow. Very clever. Very good idea. So, wow. So, the okay. So, the Pyongi, have you done a Korean dub? 
Menza? <laughs> because it sounds like oh, you yes, need we one. have a Korean cast member as well. Oh, really? Hence why we're in Korea. Yeah. Yeah. Just do a Korean dub. Pyeonggi. Korean dub. Pyeonggi. Pyeonggi mm. oh. I don't know if that's correct. Is that is that correct? Our Korean fans. Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the comments, guys. Uh, yeah. So, wow. Okay. So you kind of all came together. There wasn't a big um, publisher or something behind the band. No, we did that independently, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it didn't exist. None of you. Exist. There was no. You were not a production company. You were just mm. a bunch of. Flogs in Japan, yeah? <laughs> a couple of flogs in Japan. That's right? right. Well, we came together. We had a lot of people in our group that, um, you know, you, you, it's with any industry, you have, like, frustrated people. They want uh, more opportunities. Mm -hmm. And um, we had, you know, frustrated actors. We had frustrated models. We had frustrated Japanese directors and cameramen and sound oh, really? people and editors. You know, just people want to make something genuine, want to make something fun. They don't want to – they're tired of – Doing the usual fare, like as as a sometimes as a foreign actor in Japan, you're either a soldier, a soldier, a soldier, and a soldier, mm. and oh. um, so yeah, some wanted something a little more good, interesting, as opposed to even if you do get a, a a spot on a Japanese drama, you're usually a lost foreigner. It's like, well, uh, where's the station? Where's mm. Shinjuku? Mm. Uh, go straight yeah. and that's your role. So yeah. you want something more, so, and we wanted to show them that we could act mm. in Japanese with Japanese people in Japan, hoping. It just opens up more opportunities for us. I, I feel like I'm going to poke remarkable. the hornet's nest a little bit with this question, but I'm going to try and poke it a little bit. Um, <laughs> you said the actors are very frustrated. Can you tell us a little bit more about that as a foreign actor? You said there's only soldier and pr <clears throat> pretending to be a foreigner, literally, who just goes in and says, where is the station? Okay, so... This isn't true for like commercial work. Like uh, commercials, you can get a whole bunch of different roles. And if you can be, you know, a, a wizard, you could be a, a businessman, professor. Can, uh, a, I was a dog once, a uh, dancing dog. I mean, I've been you were, everything. What, you were a dog. I was a dancing dog. It's still uh, uh, like Tokyo in anyone. This is like a Tokyo Denoku type of thing, oh. and I dance. In a dog like suit. In a dog suit. In a dog oh, okay. Suit. Was was wondering yeah. whether you were like motion capped and they put that on a dog. No, or no. Something. We had skin tight dog suits and we had little oh, cameras, dog noses, and we have a whole little yes. spiel. And that's been constantly renewed every year, which has been great Christ. for me. Yay. But um, yeah, you can be anything in a commercial, but on Japanese movies and Japanese dramas, you're always, for the most part, an English teacher, maybe a soldier. Like I said, a soldier, priest, and sometimes a priest. Yeah. yeah. Because they like period pieces here too. So yeah. unfortunately, in Japan, anything in a period piece is going to be a soldier. It's going to be a priest. It's going to be your first kind of like a English teachers and things like that. Mm. So the, the roles are kind of limited, especially to period pieces. Like anything mm. NHK is going to be soldier. I got to play a famous translator in a. a uh, Japanese period drama, a taiga drama. I was Ernest Sato. Oh. It was like the, the, the OG of like translators from Sato? England. Sato? Yeah, yeah. Sato. Yeah, and everyone's like, the Japanese like that name because it sounds like a Japanese surname, like Sato. Yeah, yeah. isn't but, it? Yeah, no. What's the thing? His name was actually like a, like an English name. I think, what? I think it might have been a German name. I, Sato. I, I need to check my information here. Okay. All yeah. Right. But yeah, it was Sato. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds subtle. And it's very easy for Japanese people to remember. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. So. We literally, in the very first podcast, we're talking about all those great opportunities, but there seems to be a bit of a barrier there, or what do you call like a glass ceiling? Entering into this country's entertainment industry with your foreigny, foreign, foreign, and your hey, not one of the Japaneses. Are there not much like roles written? Like if I'm thinking now back to all the J dramas I've watched, and I watched a lot of J dramas because I love J dramas. But thinking about it, there Think are it. barely any foreign characters in it, and if they are, they play minuscule, tiny roles. Yep. So you might luck out in some of their their bigger dramas, like for example the the tiger drama. You might have like reoccurring like actual fundamental roles they have these morning dramas on nhk they use a lot of foreigners in those time. not a lot you might have like some quintessential characters in there but really like good acting roles like the type of things you think that you'd watch on netflix or mm. these types of things some of those roles aren't quite there for foreigners right now but mm. um there is a lot of commercial work there is a lot of like reenactment drama work um and you can get those smaller roles and of course <laughs> there's huge opportunities for youtubers here because the content here is just so easy to take but um Another one is the hard to break into is like stage work, like, mm. like you know, like acting. And I've got some opportunities doing that. So there are there are barriers here, and the opportunities are here, but it is slightly difficult to get to some of them if you don't really stay in the game. But the but that's not true just to foreigners. It's true to like Japanese comedians as well. Like you hear the story that they were like a comedian for fifteen years. They lived in a tiny 
little hole of an apartment. They had no money, no food. They're eating cup ramen every day, sharing it with their wife, cup ramen. And then 15 years later, boom, they explode. And it's similar to that. Because when I first started here, no, my name was never on a script. I was like Gaijin A, Gaijin B. Mm, foreign and, A, foreign yeah, B. Exactly. And then eventually, I had a name. Ooh. Like they started calling me Kyle-san. Uh, like, Kyle-san, Kochi. Like sometimes in the beginning, it's getting better now. Like, you know, the age shift. Um, shift, but yeah, like Gaijin San, Kochi Kochi, no, foreigner, yeah. foreigner, here, foreigner, foreigner, stand here, kind of thing. But finally, after time, you put in the work, you, you pay your dues, and you start, you finally have a name, mm. you have like an existence. So you're like, they're not going to call you Mr. Foreigner One, they're not going to call you Mrs. Foreigner, they're going to call you by cat, they're going to call you mm. by lady, they're going to call me Kyle. Mm. So yeah, you just got to put in the work, and it's there. It's not easy. It's not like um, Hollywood isn't easy, you know. So it's like it's different dynamics. There's barriers, there's doors, but eventually you can find the keys, essentially. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the thing I was like thinking um, with the, with a comedian, like there are roles for comedians or there are places for comedians, but there mm-hmm. don't seem to be that many foreign roles yet in scripts. It's like mm-hmm. not really thought about yet. Yeah, and if you do get your role, here's the thing. It's like you get your role, cool. Now, what does it lead to next? Because no one's writing the next role for the foreigner, right? That's correct. So it does happen. You remember that movie, My Darling is a Foreigner, from like 10 years ago? Ah, uh, yes, that? yes. I that dude that. lucked out. It was this uh, American dude who had the male lead in this mm. Japanese movie about a Japanese girl who marries a foreigner. Yeah, there yeah. was a, the, this morning show. I think it was, it was a morning drama with um, this actress who actually came in from um, from abroad to to act as a good housewife who mm. marries a Japanese person. And that was like a big thing a couple of years ago. Oh, too. really? Yeah. yeah, but really. I think then um, after that, I haven't really seen anything similar That's for a it. while. This is the now. thing, is there is the next opportunity waiting for them. Like that dude got a lead role in a movie. So yeah. it doesn't get any better than that. Mm. But what happened to him after? I'm not sure. Yeah. I was going to ask you, do you know what? No. I feel ter- I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm no. not trying to insult you, bro. I just I genuinely like... Yeah. So what there seem the to name? be less opportunities, but what you're saying is you can create them mm. by what you, for example, did with the Amazon show, That's right? basically what we were trying to do with that mm. because what wasn't there, you have to kind of create it. You got to mm. Sometimes if there isn't a door, you got to create the door. Yeah, right. If there isn't mm. a key, you got to create the key. Yeah, right. And so we're trying to do with that. And a lot of the members of our cast has gotten a lot of in- opportunities for that, got offers for programs, um, offers for their own programs, these types of things. So it's like the opportunities are there, but you got to show them because there is, it's not because Japan has this inherent problem with foreigners there was also an age during like the bubble period where um they brought in foreigners by just the masses and they just like there wasn't anything like what's the word i'm looking for required of them there wasn't any like Uh. standards of like performance there wasn't any professionalism there was just they were just here they're screwing around there was no professionals on set you know it's a lot of screwing around you know and that's a lot of these older production companies that think of that and they remember those days and they don't really think highly of too many foreigners so there's a lot of us who are actually trying to change the narrative and it's taking time but it is getting better there are more opportunities i am seeing more roles coming up for foreigners and like there's always there's always commercial work like always they've been using foreigners in commercials for decades like that's always going to be there but like real enriching like acting work we're still not there yet but some of the most enriching acting work i've ever tried that's available is called like motion capture for video games all uh, right like that's like acting like i d- i did that and i was like i am acting now like i'm in a full skin tight suit covered in little shiny balls mind you mm. but <laughs> i'd done some my best acting in- for a video game you know yeah. so uh. it's there it's, it might not be exactly what you're looking for but it's there. I'm so, gonna so, play Death Stranding again. Yeah, because yeah, you're in there with the most in capture. You were gonna tell ask. us. Tell us about the guys from Benza who got their own shows. Well, you know, Chris has got a lot of opportunities from that too. He's won some like NHK shows from that. Um, other people just like different offers and stuff. I don't specifically know the different okay. ones, but like they get called for it, get casted for characters right. similar to what they played. You know, I know um, Alex was given offers for being a, a big black samurai. Yeah. Because you know? okay. <laughs> okay. he was he played that in the, in the bands, right? So people are getting calls. They're getting noticed. People know who we are, know what yeah. we do. So they see us now. Okay. So if instead of waiting thing. for an opportunity, you created an opportunity. Yes. If I sounded in any way offensive to the dude who was in My Darling as a Foreigner, my sincere apologies. I genuinely was asking what was the next thing he did because mm. I didn't know. So I wasn't... Just making sure no one's trying to insult anybody or offend anybody. Is asking genuinely. Indeed, indeed. Because it is a thing. What's the next thing after you get your thing? You know. So, like you, your first so thing. you 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 created opportunities. You got opportunities. What is currently happening right now? 
Well, that's a um, kind of an issue that a lot of us there again with there are some struggles. Some things we struggle with is like what? How does it connect? Where where, where does this dot go to this dot? Like how do we get to this dot? Sometimes it doesn't. Like this dot will drop off. Yeah, right. You know? Exactly. And it's sometimes just, this dot will go here. Yeah. So I'm getting some good opportunities from the the Mr. Sunshine videos mm. as well. Mm -hmm. Like we've been on TV once already, and um, I've done two live shows with him, and we're going to be on TV again on the end of <clears throat> July. So that those dots are connecting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other ones didn't. I was did a, a countrywide um, commercial campaign for before and after, like losing weight. Oh, on commercial. oh you did. Yeah, I remember I did. that. Well, yeah. That was great. Yeah. I thought that would connect to something. Mm -hmm. It didn't. I was on a Fuji television show from that with a famous comedian who was doing the same program mm -hmm. as I did, and that led to something. But then after that, it didn't. So it just it really depends. Some things drop off, some things go to the next thing. But because I do have a history of all these other things, these dots didn't necessarily blast off. I still have this very strong foundation, and I get considered for new opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like because I have all this acting background, I get considered for motion capture, for example, mm -hmm. which is some of the, my favorite work to do. And because you do more and more motion capture, they see it on your resume. Oh, you can do this job. It's like it builds on itself. Even if the dots are falling, they're still building this foundation, which you can eventually, you know, stand up on, and like mm. you're getting taller than the rest of the people. So it looks like what you shared with all the people we've called into the podcast is hard work. Nothing's <sighs> really flying to you. No, no. Like it, it always sounds so great and shiny when we say we we have an actor here on the show. This is great. So even you, still lots of lots of hard work, lots of extra. How do you hone your craft? Like even if there's not a job, what else do you do? I mean. You work out, Ladybeard said. You work out. Like, what else do you do to keep fit, to keep going? To keep uh, oiling the machine. Well, I go on a lot of walks. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, like I said, when you're honing the craft, like, not everything is going to lead to something. You just have to deal with that. And there is a lot of disappointment, but it's just, it's because there's so much disappointment. It's more cathartic when you when you nail something, when you get something. So you got to focus on that. Like, you're going to go to a hundred auditions. You might get one out of those. You might get five, you might get ten. Like it really depends. There's no one's really super special. There is the odd guy that just flies in the country, books a, a famous commercial, and then they're famous for twenty years, you know? These these people exist, mm -hmm. you know? But that's not the norm. Mm. The norm is you come here, you work hard, you go to a million auditions, you get that one and then it just builds up to something else eventually. And where was it going with that? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hard work is what's required. Hard work. Hard work. Yeah, so what else do you do? Do you, you, oh, yes. you do okay. some sorry. kind of martial arts? And 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 mm -hmm. sorry, can I ask something? How much do you need to hustle up your work, and how much do you just hang out and wait for the agency to go and bring you opportunities? Well, I used to wait around for the agencies oh. to yeah help me out, and um, that's in the beginning that's fine because you don't have any connections, you don't have any like no one really. To, ask about jobs and stuff but eventually over time you get to know directors and things like that this might not be kosher for some agencies who don't want you talking to directors and stuff but eventually you have connections and you have to and you make connections and um you need to what's the word i'm looking for nurture them nurture mm. grow them you know, keep in contact mm. you know like a, how's it going you sometimes co in contact isn't kosher but whatever nurture the connections that you have and when there's no work Hey, how's it going? You know, send like give them New Year's greetings. Say, tell them Merry Christmas. If you know their birthday, say Happy Birthday. Get them thinking about it. Same thing with the agencies. If they haven't called you in a while, call the agency. Go visit them so they see your face, see what you look like, take some new photographs. Mm. You know, hey, is there anything? You know, I've been I've been working out. You know, I got a six pack now, or I changed my hair. I, I got some new photos. Can we uh, get me on something? I've got I got a new uh, Japanese language certificate. You know, my levels up there. Can I get on a talk show? Like anything that you've been working on, make sure they know that so that they can think of more opportunities for you. Because if you're just sitting at home and not giving them anything to work with, mm. they're not gonna be so inclined to give you a call. They might not think of you when an opportunity comes. It's like, oh, well, we'll use Jake. Jake, is, he knows the martial arts, but I'm in the in the back. I've been practicing Kung Fu for 30 years and no one knows, you know, I'm not mm. telling anyone. Mm. You know, it's good to be open with what you're doing, what you're into, so they know and they can like leverage that for you. Do you go and attend like networking events and try and schmooze and make contacts and that kind of thing? Those are definitely things um, I would recommend if you don't have mm. any kind of foundation. Yeah, mm. definitely. Mm. I mean, even if you do, I mean, it's good to get out there and people see you mm. and, and know of you. They might not, you might be known, but this particular person is making a project and they haven't seen you before. If they see mm. you, like, oh, like, oh my God, bitch, cat, oh, you'd be perfect in my movie. 
Yeah, you know, and that's just showing up for a beer, you know. I used to do tons of that when I was in Hong Kong. I did tons of that. My flatmate Kevin, so he was uh, Australian born Chinese, and I was Australian born Caucasian. Caucasian. And so we would roll with one another's cards. So we'd be hustling and whatnot. And if I was trying to schmooze up a gig and I get told, well, you know, we don't need any white dudes. I'm like, well, luckily my flatmate's Chinese, so he'll. <laughs> and he would do the same thing if they said, oh. well, we need foreigners. So, yeah, we would roll with one another's cars and hustle on one another's behalf. Well, that would be a technique in itself. Like, mm -hmm. like have, you know, friends. Have your people. <laughs> have yeah. your people. Have you your need people. your people have that your help each other out that mm -hmm. actually will support you and yeah. talk good things about you. Because this can be a cutthroat industry. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, beard. Oh, screw that guy. I don't like that guy. His energy is too loud. He's really, he's really flamboyant. I don't like it. Like, but you need people that lift you up. It's like, beard. Yeah, he's the best guy mm -hmm. I know. He's beautiful. He's kawaii and jacked. Yeah. Jack. Thanks, Kyle Khan. He's lovely. Well spoken. Coming back to the jack. Hey, this is awesome. No, keep going. This is great. <laughs> Coming back to the Jack one because I asked this twice now and Sorry, I think Kathy, someone listens to this and, is, and wants the answer as much as I want the answer. So you just want to know if I work out or not. I see. Oh, yeah, Carl's yeah, going to whip off his oh, shirt, God. ladies and gentlemen. Out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, no, no. We'll, keep it, we'll keep it PG-13, folks. Right. But, yes, I work out in my bedroom because uh, something called COVID happened. Oh, yes. I heard I about used, that. I used to go to the gym and, you know, lift the weights. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I just do it in my bedroom now. I've just been afraid to go back to the, to the, what do you call it? I've even forgotten what it's the called. Gym. The Gaim? The Gaim. The <laughs> what, the Gaim? Well, so I've been to the Gaim in a do while. Do you think like your, your exercising helps you be a better actor, move your body better, or just have better um, discipline or something like that? It's, it's all of that. If you're not having that discipline with yourself, I mean, it really, when you're, when you're feeling good and you're just doing that physicality, like sometimes your brain isn't in a good space. And sometimes you've got to go through the physical to get your brain in the right spot. So you're feeling crap. You got to move your body. Like it, even when nothing is going good for you, you can at least exercise, and that is an improvement. Mm. You know, if, if like, nothing is going good, I'm not getting jobs, not booking auditions. You can still work on yourself, and that is honing your craft. Mm -hmm. And even if you're not getting a chance to act, like pull out your phone and shoot YouTube videos or shoot reels or something. Just make a persona and film it. Like, get on a camera. Like, get used to it. So when it's pointed on you, you know, like, oh, because oh, oh, when the opportunity comes, you're not ready. What did I say? George, George Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. Floyd, yeah. You know, Floyd, Floyd. He's always at fighting weight. At least yeah, he was yeah, in his yeah. prime. He didn't right. have to cut. He was always ready. Mm. It's like, you know, oh, wait, what a $10 million fight next week? Okay. Everyone's That's like, oh, it. I got to cut. I got to cut. And he's like, okay, I'm going to, you know, no problem. So if you got to be, if you're ready, then, you know, the opportunities will come. But if you're not ready, you know, sometimes I'm, I admit, you know, I'm not the, the shape I want to be. And then, you know, Mr. Sunshine calls me up. Like, oh, crap, I need to lose a few pounds, mm -hmm. you know. You got to do it quickly, so. so yeah. You can see you can see when people are prepared. You see them go on camera or go on stage and you see them like, oh, glide into view. Mm. But then you see people who aren't prepared. They go on stage just. Like you a don't want to like be a that deflating that you just pool heard. toy. That sounded like they're crapping the themselves. Camera. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be the sound that you just heard. Don't slide on the stage crapping your pants. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Or well, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's your gimmick. Who knows? Okay, okay let's take it away down. from that. <laughs> Sorry, fart jokes. I'm in here. This is like this is like being in school with like the boys doing fart it's awesome, jokes. Isn't it yeah. great? I mean you have the uniform, you look the party. Do it. Hey! Back to school! Back this to is school. Awesome. Another question, two more questions I'd like to ask. All right. How do you deal with rejection? That might be something people can take away. If you get if you go to an audition, they don't take you, how do you deal with that? Mm. Dealing with rejection. I used to take rejection a little bit hard because, you know, you, in the beginning, you're all happy go lucky. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this. You might get lucky. You might nail the first audition. Like, yeah, it's going to happen. You might nail the second audition. Like, yeah. You might nail the third audition. Like, yeah, I'm doing this. I'm going to be a superstar. Then all of a sudden, the phone doesn't ring anymore. Mm. Mm. And then you go to a big audition. It's the job you've always wanted to do. It's that it's that motion capture audition for that game you've always wanted to be in. You, you've only got a little bit of information. Oh, my God, they're making that game. Oh, I could be in that game. Oh, my God, I'm going to do this. You go and do the audition. And you don't get it. Your heart's broken. You're crushed. You're like, oh. Then you find out who got it later. You see that guy in the game. You see him in the credits. He's like, oh, I hate that guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of the time uh, as well, you see the choice that they made and you go, this is the guy they chose? Yeah. A lot of the time, you're like, no one at the audition thought he'd be the one who got it. Exactly. But um, my technique for that is you have to remove yourself from that equation. Mm. Like, because most of the time, it's really not on you. You might have done the best performance of your entire life. You might have nailed it, like, absolutely. But the director's cousin doesn't like your nose. 
You know, it's well, something like that. Or the director's cousin um, likes blonde people. Oh, they feel that, oh, he should have blue eyes. But, but, but Kyle was better. It's like, no, no, blue eyes. That's it. It's literally that. It's people's opinions. It could be anything. Something yeah. as simple as with the shot framed the way they need it, you're too tall. Just too something tall. like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. They give it to the guy who's worse than you on every metric, except he's, you know, three inches shorter. Yeah, so you he don't gets fit it. the costume. Yeah. Your chest like is that. too wide because yeah. you've been at home working out when you don't have a job. Oh, so, oh, oh Kyle, I'm the kettlebell. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> back in. Yes. So do not take it personal. I mean, more opportunities will come. There's so many opportunities. There's so many males coming and you won't necessarily get the ones you want, but sometimes you will. Oh, so mails, like emails. celebrate those. Like just Emails, uh, uh, phone calls, anything, uh, and the yeah. job variety. I see. Like, you might not always get the ones, the jobs that you want, but you might get a few. And focus on those. Focus on the victories, mm. not the failures, because just get it in your mind, just switch it. You are going to fail every audition. Just put it in your mind. You're going to fail every audition. This, this, doesn't, this isn't a negative thing. Just put it in your mind. Be happy. Be surprised when you get it. Mm. Not, don't mm, be surprised that you didn't get it. Ah, just right. come, approach it as in it could literally be anyone. But always focus on giving it your absolute best every mm. time. Like okay. go in there, like get your aura right, get it, get it done. Like go in there, like I was this to is work your on job. your script beforehand. Yeah. Take yeah. it seriously. This might sound a little weird, but I like to go in there to. I call. I, I'm going. I'm not going in there to audition. I'm going to introduce myself to the director. Mm -hmm. Mm. You know, no, for actually. the job I'm going to do, and that works out sometimes, and sometimes mm. it doesn't. But you can view it sometimes as. Sometimes to remember you. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can view it as an exercise to improve your skills each yeah. time as well. It's like going yeah. for a job interview, really. Yeah. Maybe you wouldn't just what they were looking for. Exactly. Oh. You know? Final piece of advice for everyone who wants to become an actor in Japan. Well, I would say if that is what you want to do, I would say just start. Like uh, one foot in front of the other. I mean, you could keep sitting on excuses and not doing anything. Like, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? I, what, how do I do to get ready? Like, you're never ready. Um, you know, you're, ne you're never skinny enough. Your, your hair is never blonde enough. Your teeth are never perfect enough. Um, if you don't start, the lifestyle will never start, you know, so I know that I'm, this is just not personal advice. This is just entertainment purposes. But um, if that's something you want to do, if you've decided this is what I'm going to do, just start. Make a phone call. Phone an agency. Email an agency from your country. If you're in the country, go see an agency. Call and make an appointment. See if they'll even be interested in you. Just, just start. Do something. If you're Scared to even phone them, get some headshots. You're going to need headshots, you know. Um, if you're scared to even go get headshots, get some on-camera work. Like set up your smartphone and videotape yourself. See what you look on the video. Like these types of things. Like any little step you can take that you're comfortable with and you gradually get more comfortable to start get to go forward. Just But just start. That is all you can do. And then it expands. It builds on itself. Again, the foundation. It's good advice. Mm -hmm. Do you have advice Pretty for the people? Solid. Do you have advice, advice? cat? The cat's meow? Well, <laughs> what? <laughs> me? Jenny? Cat, duh, Kathy? You just randomly like threw the ball to me? And, and there goes the ball. Kyle just gave some excellent advice. Kyle just gave, some excellent, advice. The cat, Kyle the just gave some excellent advice. We were sitting here and I'm like, well, what Kathy can has to say on the topic. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Get, well done, get started. But also, if you are abroad, I think the visa thing is going to be a bit oh. of a barrier for a lot of people. That's what I was thinking while listening to you, mm. like being honest. So first you need to somehow, for those who are still abroad, you need to find a way to get your foot into the door. And it might not be as pretty. You might not come straight here as an actor. You might have to first go the route that most of the people do and start maybe teaching English. English do that teacher. on the side and then find your way there. Or if you're lucky, and we talked about that in the first episode, get yourself a work and visa, work and holiday visa. And then you have more freedom to shift working schedules around to maybe build a career and stuff like that. Exactly. Don't be afraid to pivot. That's because mm. the beginning doesn't have to be the end. You can be a English teacher, like mm. you said. Yeah. You can That's be a be humanity. That's start for a lot of people. Yeah. You, you can, can work, work at Google. the um, <laughs> You can work at the Butler Cafe. You. No, that was, that was something was, I was, though, I was given that advice when I first came. I was told you could do the Butler Cafe because that's because it's at night time, so it gives you daytime to work on your career. Then you go and buttle at night. Mm, buttle, and um, that's an option for you. That's funny. You I was need... given the same advice. Well, you then. really yeah, yeah. high oh. five for buttling. Buttling. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right. I've never actually seen a foreigner in the butler cafe. No? no. Well, there's actually there's, there's Japanese butler cafes mm. and um it's, like, it's actually um Shizzy did a video about this is coming yeah. up. Um where 
they actually go to England and learn how to be a butler. Uh-huh. They learn how to like learn all about high tea and stuff like this. But the Butler Cafe, as far as I know, um, that employs foreigners is, is not that high class. No, I'm not saying. I'm not saying another Butler Cafe. I don't. I don't. I'm saying they're not going to send you to England to learn how to butler. Mm. As far as I know, but if it still exists, I went there and I met the owner. She was lovely. It really? seemed like a good place. But she actually she recommended that I shouldn't work there. Oh, oh really? Why was yeah, that? She, she believed. She's actually. It was actually very heartwarming. She said, "You know, I don't want you to work here. I feel there's more for you out there, and I think you should just try being an actor. And oh, like, that's you Just wow. do what you want to do." And I, like, she didn't want me to work there. That's very beautiful. It was very it? kind of her, actually. Yeah. Have so, you ever bottled? I I think I haven't, but I would love to be a maid in a maid cafe. Oh, yeah? I would love to do that. You can do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're I'd already well, halfway there. Just put an <laughs> apron you can on. Just show up. Go with the ship for the maid cafe. Do you have some water? You can make it up. <laughs> can you can you make it oishi? Uh, ah, oishi kunare, moi moi kyu kyu kyu. Yay! That's good. You can totally make cafe. I could totally do that. Go do an interview. So no matter which path you take. You can take different paths. They can take you to Japan. They can take you to acting. You might end up being a butler. You might end up being a priest. But the most important oh. is that you don't give up and don't let rejection hurt you personally. Did that's I get that right? right? That's right. It's a good summary. Hmm. That's right. All right, Kyle. Excellent. Let us know where you can find you online. Online, you can find me on all the socials on Twitter, Kyle underscore card. You can find me on the Instagram at Bakairu. That's Bakairu, uh, B-A-K-A-I-R-U. You can find me at TikTok at the same name and Bakairu Japan on the YouTubes. The Benza on streaming services worldwide and on NHK World. You can find me on Journeys in Japan, Trails to Oishi, Tokyo. Mm, Lady Beard, where can we find you? I'm Lady Beard. You can find me on the internet <laughs> at, at Lady Beard underscore Japan. And you can find my group Baby Beard at at Baby Beard underscore Japan. You can find Kathy Cat at Japan Railway Journals and Journal. Come on. Singular. It's a single Jap- journal. <laughs> After you, Japan please. Japan Railway <laughs> Journal. Ladies and gentlemen, There's only yet one. again, this is an episode where <laughs> Lady Beard got the program wrong. I'm like this microphoneless <laughs> plug. <laughs> Just plug it into nothing, just searching for my socket, oh, gosh. but always coming up short. All my wonderful listeners, if you're listening to this right now, if you have counted how many episodes has <laughs> Lady Beard got it wrong, please let us know in the comments. This is episode also, 68, so I guess it gets about 67 of them. <laughs> We're on episode 68 now, and if you are seeing, uh, listening to us on the podcast, I can highly recommend you our YouTube channel as well, Cat with Beard from Japan, so you can see Kyle's handsome face. He's Oh, I recommend that. Oh, Japanese oh, you're school kind. uniform. Yeah. Kathy Cat's my, glorious Lolita setup. I am currently a mix Beautiful. between a lemon and some cherries. You look remarkable. And I met actually a guy at the elevator who was dressed as a massive melon. So yeah. this is the fruity day. I don't fruity. know what's going yeah. on here. Uh, you can find me, Kathy Cat underscore TV, Twitch, Twitter, and the Lycans, YouTube, all of that. And Japan Railway Journal. Lichens, weren't the lichens one of the aliens from the star, one of the Star Trek series? The Wait, isn't that a lycanthrope? I don't know. Anyways, guys. A <laughs> master in science fiction. <laughs> you should know all about the lichens. <laughs> the lichens. The lichens. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you see us and the lichens and the lichenthropes, maybe. Who knows? Don't forget to on like. <laughs> exactly. Comment don't forget and to subscribe. Like. <laughs> Send us an email. On What's another that? episode with... Cat Wendbear!